Okay, right, we're gonna get started. It looks like everyone's joined in. Welcome everyone to the Palm Beach North Chamber of Commerce's webinar today. Thank you for joining us with r, r Industries and the Palm Beach County Division of Emergency Management. Before I go over the bios, I just wanna go over some housekeeping items. Uh, we have everyone in uh, the mute form, so please do not unmute yourself throughout this webinar. Uh, leave it to the speakers to have their uh, the floor. And then at the end of it, we will go over questions throughout the webinar. If you do have any questions, feel free to submit it in the chat box, which if you guys look at your screen and hover over it, you'll see a chat icon with the conversation bubble. Click on that. You can uh, send either a question to me, Brittany Cartwright, or to everyone and we will go over those towards the end of the webinar. Now onto our two speakers for the day. We have first John Carr with r, r Industries. He is a storm restoration expert. John Carr is vice president of the restoration division of r, r Industries, a commercial contractor headquartered in Central Florida since 1948. John will be leading the restoration division from a new office that will be located in Palm Beach County. Widely recognized for his restoration expertise, Carr brings many years of experience having worked on major projects throughout the state, including Hurricane Matthew, Irma, and Michael, to name a few. John assists his clients by managing the insurance claim process and putting together a team of experts to ensure that your property is restored properly and receive what is rightfully owed to them by the insurance company. A HAAG certified inspector, John possesses the resources to assess your property or damaged property effectively and with confidence. Also on our webinar today, we have Bill Johnson, who is the director of the Palm Beach County Division of Emergency Management. Throughout his nine year tenure, he, was guide, he has guided the county in its response to several disaster incidents, including Tropical Storm Isaac in 2012, Hurricane Matthew in 2016, and Hurricane Irma in 2017. He has led his division to become one of the only 43 local programs in the nation to become an accredited emergency management program. Prior to Palm Beach County, Bill worked as an assistant director of the Broward County Emergency Management Division and assistant director for the Miami-Dade County of Office, uh, excuse me, Office of Emergency Management. So he's a South Florida man. Bill has developed to several major disasters, in, excuse me, Bill has been deployed to several major disasters, including to New York City's Emergency Operations Center to assist with incident command after the 9-11 attacks on America to Monroe County after Hurricane Irma, and to Calhoun County after Hurricane Michael. He is a registered nurse, certified paramedic, and certified emergency manager. Without further ado, take it away, gentlemen. All right, well, thank you so much. Appreciate everybody being on today. So a little bit about what we're gonna be doing here today. We're gonna go over a little bit about the new forecast uh, from NOAA that we received and supplies and documents, know your zone, have a game plan and what to do during the storm. And then we're gonna you know, wrap it up with some questions and answers. So from last time, we actually had a little bit of an increase in what the hurricane season is gonna look like um, overall. So this isn't broken down into the way we had it last time where we had Palm Beach County and the different counties surrounding us, those percentages. But as you can see, they did increase a little bit. Um, you know, I think it was like 51% that there was gonna be above normal uh, season. So now we're up to 60% and they're projecting 13 to 19 named storms, six to 10 hurricanes and three to six. So they increased it by one or two. I just wanted to post that out there that this is the latest one from NOAA. This came out a couple of weeks ago. Um, and you know, it's, it's something very concerning, especially during uh, the pandemic that we have right now. We want to be ready for this as much as possible. So some of the hurricane hazards that we're going to cover, uh, I think this is real important that we look at some of the hazards that are out there. So you have extreme winds um, that we know about, uh, storm surge, inland flooding, tornadoes, and post-storm injuries. And a lot of people forget about post-storm injuries. And I know uh, Mr. Johnson is going to go into this a little bit about where the you know injuries really come from and where is it 
that uh, people are not safe and that a lot of problems happen. And you'll be surprised to hear when, when Bill goes into his presentation where most of the injuries and where most of the problems will lie, uh, come up when they're uh, during a storm. So uh, these are the things we're going to cover today. And now I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Bill Johnson. Bill, I want to thank you for being here. We greatly appreciate it. I know you're slammed busy right now. And, you know, for you to, you know, take the time out to meet with us and, and do this for us, we greatly appreciate it. The Palm Beach North Chamber appreciates it, and I uh, personally appreciate it as well. So, Bill, the floor is yours, sir. Well, thank you very much, John. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate the opportunity. And again, I, I never turned down an opportunity to be able to spread the message, and I appreciate your willingness to help with that in that process. So, um, our mission, of course, is to uh, minimize the impact of emergencies throughout uh, the county by through education, which is what we're doing today, planning and response through coordinating information and resources, which is what we'll do throughout the year. Uh, it is important for us to, to remember that we are not the hurricane people. We're not just the hurricane people. Everybody thinks that we are. Uh, right now, our EOC has been activated. We're in our 82nd day of activation. Um, it's for COVID-19. Um, we are also uh, very closely monitoring all the protests that are going on, which is another one of our um, threats that we monitor. We look at uh, 14 major threats around or from, uh, disaster threats ranging from a nuclear power plant to, as again, communicable diseases to severe weather to hazardous materials and whatnot. So again, um, thank you for uh, allowing us to talk about one of those hazards today. The, the next slide. We look, we work together. It's just not just our emergency operations center here. We work together with a lot of folks. Emergency management is, our job is, is to bring people to the table. I have a, a small office of 30 employees. There's no way that we could do everything to get the community back on, on its feet after a major disaster. It takes, uh, it takes an entire community to get back on, on, on its feet. And it involves a variety of, 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 people, stakeholders, and groups. So uh, first responders, of course, the, the fire, law enforcement, public works, health providers, you name it. Uh, we work with them day in and day out so that we're ready to respond and able to respond. We work obviously with all of our local governments. Just before this call, I was on a call with um, our 39 municipalities. And again, we coordinate uh, this, this, this COVID thing. We were, I can't remember what number call this has been on, but we're now, calling, we're working with our municipalities. We were doing daily calls. We're now down to Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So again, we continue to coordinate all the time with our local municipalities. Our public, of course, is a very important part. If we don't motivate our public, uh, then uh, we've kind of lost that battle. But more importantly today, I want to talk about how we can communicate and, and coordinate with our, our businesses and our, um, in our, our private sector organizations. Next slide. And that's why it's important before a disaster, it's important that, that every business should have a plan. There's a lot of resources out there. You can go to our website, which is readypbc.com. Um, and, and we have a whole section on our, our home site, our home webpage in for the Division of Emergency Management on business preparedness. Uh, so uh, you should be able to get, uh, there's templates on there. There's a template for a coop plan our continuity of operations plan and whatnot. But again, it's really, really important to have a plan so that you can identify the risks that you have that will impact your business and how you can prepare uh, and prevent damage and protect your, uh, your, not only your business, but also your employees. That's so important that you consider your, your, uh, your employees because as you well know that employees are, 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 are the backbone of, of your business. Uh, I always want to talk about how you prepare your employees is, is how essential that is because it's a prepared employee is a resilient employee. Uh, we find time and time again that if, if employees are not able to respond to your business after a disaster, then your, your, your business is not able to respond after a disaster. And in fact, and we're, we see it now. 40% of small businesses don't survive after disaster, and we're seeing it head on right now uh, during this COVID response. So it's really, really important that every, every business develop a plan that, that has 
preparedness and mitigation actions that work to ensure your longevity and your safety. Um, then not only just develop that plan, but also test that plan. Uh, it's not just enough to write that plan and you know put it on the shelf, but take that plan off the shelf and test it frequently. And that it doesn't mean that you have to go out and do all kinds of exercises and and stop work for a whole day. But during staff meetings, you know, maybe have a question, you know, a five minute question and answer period about, you know, what would we do if, if this were to happen? And just kind of discuss it just for a few minutes. And then the next staff meeting, uh, what, what, what are some of the you know, essential elements of your home personal preparedness plan and, or kit, should I should say, and those kinds of things? Or what are some resources? Just a quick question here and there to kind of get people to continually thinking about it. Because again, a prepared employee is a resilient employee. Next slide. It's always important to stay informed. And again, we we preach that time and time again, that when you, uh, during the storm and after the storm, um, you can continue to follow us, follow us on our, on our uh, social media. Uh, we will, we send out information through all of our media channels. They are, um, our, our, uh, we, we have staff here from the, uh, with a small business industry groups and we will communicate, they will, they will communicate with the chambers. We have a variety of ways of continuing to communicate through our, to our community through various media, media channels. The television stations will simulcast on uh, uh, FM and AM channels. So again, it's important to have, everybody's kind of abandoned the thought now, but everybody, you should still have, you know, those transistor AM, FM radios and batteries because trust me, um, when the internet goes down, uh, you're going to need that, those um, for in order to, to stay informed during disaster. Next slide. After a disaster, you know, work on assessing your damage, reporting reporting your damaging damages, of course, to your insurance company and whatnot. You know, have that pull that plan out and make sure that you're working to uh, reestablish your business in in a safe a safe function or safe process. This, there's a lot that you can do uh, after a disaster, but I, but one of the most important things to do is to do it carefully and be 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 careful not to do things too quickly. I know things if you want to get back up and running right away, but try not to do things too quickly because as I as I always say, the the there's the the number the number one killer in a disaster in a hurricane is storm surge. Um, but the number two killer in, in, in a hurricane is floodwaters. And then the number three killer in a hurricane is the post-disaster injuries. So if the surge, if you evacuate and the surge doesn't get you, then be careful about all the standing water that is around. And then after that, be careful about all the other dangers that are around. So people falling off ladders, falling off a roof. Um, you'll notice that there will be a lot of uh, traffic signals that are down. So there's a lot of traffic accidents and, and other unsafe scenarios, down, down power lines and, and whatnot. So be very careful after uh, a disaster and um, in, in, in getting that business up. Don't be too, 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 too speedy in getting that up. Don't be too careless in getting that up. Uh, but go back and um, go go to and, and open slowly. Make sure that you uh, have everything safe for not only your customers but also your employees. Um, we do have a reentry plan, in and that's on our website as well. It's a phased reentry plan. Um, we what, if we cordon off an area and exclude it, uh, phase one means that that no one is allowed. What we'll do is we'll have. Uh, train first responders in that area, go in and make sure that the area is safe, um, and then make sure that all the threats are removed so that all the, 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 the gas leaks and the fires and whatnot and all the power lines are, are de-energized. And then the second phase, we, we will allow uh, the primary businesses to allow, or, you know, the essential businesses to go back in, but we will only allow the business owners and their their um, coop people to go in, so their engineers, their maintenance people to go in and 
and fortify the business. In other words, to set, to, to make their business secure and get it, um, you know, and to turn things off. We want to let the pharmacists back into Walgreens to make sure that everything is secure. Um, we're not, it's not to get it back into opening. It's to just to secure the facility. During phase three, that's to repair the business and get it back and ready to open it up. And of course, phase four is, is when we'll open it up. So there's various phases. It's all on our website. Um, all, all good for you. So again, have an idea on that one. Is I can't stress enough how important it is for businesses to have um, identification for their, rep, their, their employees, especially uh, in that reentry phase in phases two and three. Uh, so have ID cards. If you don't have ID cards, please have a, a, a letter that has their name on it and what their function is and have it be current. You can't write a letter and have it be 10 years old. You should be writing letters every year. There's a sample letter on our website. Um, I, I encourage employees to be wearing uh, uniforms whenever they respond to their, um, inter, during curfews and, and, and if, they, if they have to cross through checkpoints. And I would encourage uh, businesses to have um, marked vehicles. If they're not marked, then you can use, um, you know, magnetic signage or whatever. But I encourage all that, um, you know, to help uh, improve that process because nine times out of ten, uh, you may be encountering the National Guard, and they, you know, the National Guard may be from anywhere from around the state, and and um, they're going to have to, um, uh, you know, go by multiple different. Um, uh, example or multiple sources of of identification for for a person so next slide bill, bill do you mind if i ask you not really i guess it's sort of a question sure. uh, you know it's so important you talked about you know when the damage happens and people are out there the the one of the what did you say it was the third uh leading injuries right it's from when people are trying to repair their own property and right. i can remember when francis and Jean came through uh, you know, all of us, all our neighbors, we just got together. We were going on roofs. We were, uh, it was, it was actually a little, a little crazy. Now that I think about it, now that I'm in the, in the industry and, and understand how dangerous we were really doing, it didn't take any liking to how close we were to power lines or any of those things. We're swinging hammers at, at you know, two feet from a power line. That's not very smart. Um, that are wet, by the way. Um, so, you know, would you suggest in that you know when you're when they're doing this that they hire um you know licensed contractors not just us on this isn't just about r and r this is about everybody you know any licensed contractor there's so many people that when a storm happens you know you're gonna see you know thousands of trucks come to town and some of those right. license plates are gonna be from Texas and Georgia and North Carolina. <laughs> they come from everywhere. And that's okay, because we're gonna need the help, right? Just like we need you know, peak energy to come in and help FPL. But is there anything that you would suggest uh, besides that, that you know, when it comes to hey, having them making sure that they're hiring licensed people? Well, exactly, and I think that's all part of the the having a plan process that I talked about earlier. And that is, is that make sure that you have um, uh, the, those contracts beforehand. If you don't have a contract beforehand, then you're going to be, as you mentioned, everybody's going to be calling their contractor right. and, and, you know, you're going to be in queue later in the queue kind of thing. Those people that have contracts are going to be in the front of the line. So it's important to have those contracts and work on that now. And as you all know that, you know, your insurance company is, is going to require you to mitigate the damage after the storm. So you're right, John, you know, uh, it's, they're gonna ask that you do something. If you got a leaky roof, they're gonna expect that you make some effort to put a tarp up on that roof. And right. the last thing you wanna do, the last thing that a, a restaurant's gonna wanna do is have their bartenders and waitresses up on the roof, putting a tarp up there. We need to have trained people up there, trained engineers up, you know, looking at that roof to see if it can support people and and we do this safely and so i agree that yeah this, this is the kind of this is the kind of thing that you need to be doing now so that you can get those folks in place immediately after to help mitigate it and again mitigating it immediately after the storm gets you back on your feet a lot sooner you get that tarp on that roof uh you you won't you know it rains every day 
in the afternoon, you know, the less water damage you have, uh, the less mold and mildew and further water damage you're going to have down the road. No, that is so true. And they also want to make sure that they get people that are trained, not, not just for the safety part of it. That's obviously the most important. But the other thing is we've seen where insurance companies, if they mitigate it and then they don't properly document it, um, we've seen them deny insurance claims where it was literally damaged from a storm. But because of the way they did the mitigation, the insurance company was able to come back and say, no, um, it's not covered because th there was no proof of what it was like before, those types of things. So it's real important, too, that when you're mitigating, uh, that a lot of documentation and, you know, and again, whether it's R&R &R or it's other companies or it's a, whether it's a, attorneys, whatever it may be, it's so important to document that stuff uh, right. properly. Yeah, um, and, and just simply before the storm, always just, you know, run around your business and take pictures on your right. cell phone or, you know, before the, you know, just, just before you close the door and lock out kind of thing, so. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, I'm going to change the next slide. Sorry about that, Bill. No worries. No, this is a this is a tag team. <laughs> so, so the the next thing I want to talk about is we have a, a business damage reporting tool. We call it um, um, B Dart or B um, PBC PBC Dart or um, and then there's two other forms, if you will. There's the I Dart and the B Dart. I Dart is the individual uh, damage assessment tool, and the B Dart is the business. Uh, damage assessment tool and the, 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 they're on our website there if you just follow those links but they're downloadable and they're uh, you know on your on your cell phone and there's a lot of good information on on the phone uh, on that app so first of all having every one of your employees download that app th there's two phases to the to the uh, to the app number one there's a pre-storm um, there's a prepared element, if you will, to the, to the uh, app where there's all kinds of information about evacuation zones, shelters, how to make a plan, what should be in your kit, how to get involved, all that kind of good stuff. And then, um, then, uh, um, you know, then there's all kind of, and then after the storm, there's I information about where locations of gas stations that are still in business, um, generated gas stations, generated uh, grocery stores, and whatnot. The, the, the DART program, the DART app th that you have right there, the, the, those are screenshots of it. Talk shows you where, um, how you can uh, find out what, what evacuation zone you're in, if you are in an evacuation zone. And again, as you see, the first slide, the first screenshot there is the before emergency, all kinds of good pre-storm preparedness information. And then of course, after the emergency, again, all the grocery and buildings, you know, the Home Depots, open gas stations. Uh, and then there's the reporting, the damage reporting uh, tool, where it's just a real simple thing where you report, you know, uh, low, moderate, high, or extensive damage. And it works for both homes and businesses. And we use those, we use this information and again, both damage and flood levels. And we use those this damage reporting. Not it's not intended to be an insurance reporting tool. It's not intended to be a, a reporting tool to cry for help. Please, by all means, use if you need help, you should dial 911. This yeah. is a way of us seeing, um, getting a quick snapshot of where the damage is. Uh, in the county. What will happen is, is that those with extensive damage will get a red dot. Those with high damage will get a orange dot. And those with a moderate damage will get a green dot. And those with no damage will get a blue dot. And what we're going to look for is those clusters of red dots. And then that's where we're going to send um, teams out to, with, with resources. To, those are going to be our hot spots because we won't be able to get a helicopter back into town for you know about a day at least um, so using this tool helps us find do a kind of a countywide uh a, a survey of where the hot spots are and where we can send that we've done that several times now with irma michael and even dorian and we're able to you know target those areas that were most damaged 
And, and again, the B dart is a, is a tool just like the I dart, which is the individual damage assessment tool. The B dart is for businesses and the pictures are different. It looks like a warehouse instead of a home, but the same kind of thing. And it helps us again, understand uh, those areas that, that are, um, you know, like the downtown urban areas and stuff as well. So we, we ask that you, you take a part and you take part in that process as well. Next slide. Great. Thank you, Bill. Um, I, I, I'll skip over this part really quickly because I know, but I, I did want to put this in this, in the presentation because I know that there's going to be, there, there might be questions about it. Just suffice to say that, that we are, Again, this is, I know that this is a group of, of, of business folks, but I know that some of your employees may have to go to, to shelters. And so I just want to point out to them that we are making every possible uh, effort to make our shelters uh, as safe as possible in light of the COVID pandemic. And we are doing a lot of strategies to do what we can to enhance our social distancing and provide masks and hand sanitizer. We're going to look at um, maybe, um, it, as, look, we're gonna closely monitor how th the census within our shelters, as we see that shelters start to fill up, we may, for example, start diverting people to less um, populated shelters and so that we don't get two shelters too filled. Um, we believe that we have plenty of capacity. We don't need, uh, we, it's not that easy finding new shelters, but um, for example, during Dorian, we had 17,000 people go to shelters. We currently have capacity for 55,000 people. So we have um, plenty of capacity. Uh, so it's just a matter of if, if a shelter starts getting too crowded, we'll, we'll just kind of rearrange people. So, um, and then we'll do things like uh, uh, staggering the feeding period. So in other words, it used to be just open it. We're going to have lunch around noon and then people will just line up. Well, we obviously for social distancing, we're not, we're going to, we'll do it in, in shifts, if you will. So there are a lot of things that we'll do um, to, again, try to, um, maintain as safe as possible um, um, process within our shelters to make sure that people who need to evacuate won't decide not to evacuate because of the pandemic. Well, I think we might see a lot of that. I know that there's some, been some stubborn people in the past that, you know, down in the Keys that say, I'm staying here. We're not, <laughs> you know, we're not leaving. And, and uh, I always say, I hope they have real sturdy homes on stilts down there, uh, which I don't know if that even makes sense, right? But, you know, I am sure that over the past few months with the pandemic that your office has been, you know, really insane busy trying to figure this all out, right? Because this is, you just, you have a plan and now the plan is completely changed with COVID. Is that, is that fair to say? Well, I, again, I don't think the plan is completely changed. Again, my four rules, uh, you know, have a plan, build a kit, stay involved, and be informed. Those four elements haven't changed. Um, and so my, more of a my modification system, for the yeah. show. Yeah, but again, we just modified it. You're right. You know, so we're going to provide, we'll have a stock of, or a cache of masks there. And I still would like to have people bring their own masks because, um, you know, you, you, in theory should, um, you know, should change your mask free, you know, at least every day or every other day. Um, you know, so, you know, I don't know that I'm going to have an, a lot of, uh, I'm not going to have millions and millions of masks, but, uh, you know, I think it would be, so I ask people to bring their own mask, to bring their own hand sanitizer. Um, but we will have those added supplies. We are going to look to, um, it'll take us some creativity. We used to just mark out squares on the, on the floor now, but we can't do that now because what we're going to have to start doing is we're going to have to do some building, some flexibility. We have to kind of design the floor so that families are now six feet apart. So we're, you know, we'll, we'll work, out, we'll have to find some additional areas within the school, you know, so maybe move people out in the hallways for a while. And then, then during the height of the storm, bring them in. 
Um, you know, we'll be cleaning the, the bathrooms and, and high contact areas more frequently. So again, yeah, modifications to the plan, but um, again, for the most part, the plan is still the plan. If you need to, yeah, if you need to evacuate, you know, the, the, the options have, are still the same. One, stay in, stay within county. If you have to evacuate, don't go, mi go miles, not hundreds of miles. So stay in county, go to a family member's home, friend's home, co-worker's home. If you don't have any one of those options, go to a hotel. If you don't have any, if that's not an option, then come to a, one of our shelters. And, and, and I appreciate that. So it sounds like the, one of the most important things is if you're in that evacuation zone, still evacuate. It's going to be the county is providing um, a safe place if needed. Correct. Correct. So I think you can skip. Oh, the, the only other thing was, is that if, that if you are feeling sick when you come to a count or a, a shelter, we will not um, refuse your admission. We may, uh, you know, we'll do some screening. You may take your temperature. And, um, and if you're not feeling well, we might, we might move you to a separate area so that, that you wouldn't contaminate the others. And, um, and, you know, again, that way we can, we can, we can assure the safety of the remaining population and provide, you know, whatever assistance that you might need. And we might deliver meals to those folks. So again, you know, a little bit of tweaking here and there, but again, for all, in, for all intents and purposes, the plan is the plan. Great. So there's, there's not that much different in reality when you really look at it, you know, and I know that, you know, we, we just have to make some modifications to keep everybody safe. And, and I will tell you, you know, working all over the state and the county, and I'm not just saying this because you're on here or because this is my home and I love Palm Beach County, but this county and the resources that you have um, are top notch. I, I've looked at a lot of different websites and then you have the app uh, reporting tool. I, I don't think I've seen, I'm sure there's some counties that have it, but I, I haven't seen that um, in some of the counties that I've worked in. Uh, but, you know, we should feel really safe here in reality. When I think about this and I look at the whole thing that the emergency management department's doing, you guys really have us ready. Um, I think the biggest problem we may have is getting that information out where people hear it. I don't know if that makes sense, right? So, because there's so much that we can only do. There's only so many ways that we can inform people. Um, but if I wasn't in, in the business, I'm not sure. I, I, you know, I spend hours and hours and hours researching things. So I find a lot, but the novice isn't going to find some of this stuff, but the way that Palm Beach County has it set up with these links. And just so everyone knows, I'm going to share these links. I'm going to do a follow-up email. Um, please know that we're, the county's here to help you. Uh, right. and, and there's a lot of resources there. We don't like to toot our horn too much. So, um, you know, we're kind of a humble group, but I, I will admit that I have a tremendous staff. It's a small staff, but it's a very hardworking staff. They're very competent and, uh, and I'm very, very honored to be uh, a, a member of that. And, um, and I think we, we, you know, we're an accredited agency and that's not, that doesn't go by very easily. And I think it sets us a, ahead of a lot of different groups. So I think, I, I hope, that our, our residents and as well as our business leaders uh, feel a bit more comfortable at night when they go to bed knowing that that they have got a strong public safety team behind them. Well, they should. Uh, based on what I've seen and all the research I've done, great job and thank you. Is there anything else that you want to talk about here? I think, I think this is where you take over. <laughs> this is it. No, all right. Just, just, <laughs> well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I did want to throw that in there that everything I've seen is, is Palm Beach County's top notch there with, with the information and resources out there. All right. So developing a workplace emergency plan, you know, so now we're, we're getting ready for this, you know, have your staff planning, help them prepare their home. Uh, you know, I'm going to take something that Rick Morrell uh, talked about years ago. Uh, if you don't know Rick, he's the CEO of Tropical Shipping and him and I are working on a disaster resiliency uh, committee to help our community be more resilient during uh, crises and disasters. And one of the things he said to me was, John, the most important thing you can do when you're planning your uh, workplace is let the staff 
uh, you know, get their home ready first. So apparently at Tropical Shipping, when a hurricane is coming, they tell their staff to go home and get their homes ready and then come back and plan on staying at Tropical, uh, you know, for the duration. And I think that's important. Uh, if you think about it, you know, I, I've seen it uh, personally where, you know, people say, well, listen, we have to take care of all our clients before you take care of your home. And the, the staff, the people were not 100% in it. They were thinking about, oh my gosh, I have to go take care of my mom's house and my grandmother's house and my business. So they weren't really focused on uh, taking care of business. They were more thinking about their home. So if they have their home in order, uh, makes it a little easier. And then prepare your location for flooding and roof leaks. And what, what I mean by that is, you know, take plastic, assume that the roof is going to leak and assume you're going to have a flood. That's what I want people to think about is that just assume that. And if a flood came in and went two, three feet, uh, what would that look like? What would be damaged and do everything you can to mitigate that? Any of your, te you know, your technology, your computers, uh, get everything covered. And then have a communication plan uh, for your customers and your staff. Um, you know, what is that? Have a go-to person, have a person that is the main point of accountability for the staff and then who's going to contact the customers um you know i'll go back i remember when uh it was either francis or gene i can't remember which one because they happened uh, in and i was in the uh, technology world and i remember somebody called me and they needed something for a piece of equipment and it was literally a day or two after the storm had hit and they contacted me and I was able to go reach out to them and help that customer. That, that customer really appreciates when you go above and beyond during uh, a disaster. So make sure that you have a great communication plan to let your customers know what you're doing, when you're open. You should be really doing it now, even with COVID-19. You know, my wife was telling me about how she has uh, people that she works with, you know, in the, you know, whether it's a hairdresser or people like that, that she has one person that keeps updating her every day. Uh, or every week telling them what's going on and the precautions they're taking. And then she has someone else that hasn't even reached out to them. So it's important, make sure you notify your customers of what's happening, what your plan is and your staff. And then have plans with contractors for, to protect your property. What you wanna do is make sure that, you know, you call your IT company, make sure your IT company, uh, what, is, what are they gonna do? If I'm down, what's gonna happen? You know, most people nowadays, everything is so remote. Um, even more so now than it was even six months ago. Uh, what are you going to do to make sure that once there's power, you can up and running? And then, of course, obviously, with the mitigation that we talked about earlier. All right, so make sure you're ready. We want to make sure you're ready. Know your risk. Find out if you're in a flood zone. Uh, make sure if you're in these evacuation uh, plans and what routes are they. Make sure that you're ready for that for your business and your home. So, you know, a lot of people forget about the business side of it. Uh, businesses that are on the barrier island, you got to make sure like uh, Bill was talking about, have IDs, be able to get ready to, to get back on to those areas to check out your property to make sure that it's okay. Um, make sure, we talked about this uh, last month, have your insurance policy reviewed by a professional, uh, sometimes a third party. But again, if you're comfortable with your with your agent, talk to your agent. But you know, there's a lot of things that uh, can be missed in an insurance policy. You know, I was just talking to somebody earlier today, and they were telling me about the gaps um, with the COVID, with the business interruption insurance, and things like that. That there's a word or two in these policies that can make a difference whether or not you're covered. So you want to make sure you get that. Then a pre-storm property assessment is very important. You want to make sure to document your property, um, flood zones, and how they impact you. Uh, just really know where those flood zones are. I know that, you know, we talked about it a little bit, but even today you look outside, you know, there's a lot of flooding. Be careful. Um, it's dangerous out there. Develop your workplace emergency plan, which we talked about. Make sure you have your supplies. Um, you know, I have a pretty, I've been here all my life. So I have a system pretty much down pat that by the time June 15 hits, I have everything I need for, for storm season. I, and I start, uh, some people think I'm crazy, but I actually start this in like March, April, where every time I go to Costco, I buy something and, you know, this way I'm not hit with, you know, you know, a 500 or a thousand dollar bill. So I kind of absorb it. Each time I go to Costco, I'll pick up extra water. Uh, every time I go to Costco, I'll buy batteries just every time, just one at a time. Um, and then I'll take my kid out. I started my generators uh, this weekend. Actually, it's the 
uh, first weekend of the month. It should have done last week or this past weekend, but you know, this weekend I take my generators out. I start them up. I get them ready. Make sure the fuels. I have. Um, hey, don't be mad here, Bill. But I do have chainsaws, right? But then, then I know how to operate them. I operate them safely. But I check all my chainsaws. Make sure that, that I'm ready to go. Um, and then also looking around my property. What am I going to do with the things that that can fly around during a storm on my property? So make sure you have all your supplies ready to go. All right, we have a few minutes left uh, for some Q and A. We have any questions? I think I'll turn it over to Brittany. John, if I could just add, a, you know, those supplies, but also think about your business as well. You know, think about, you know, having kind of a command post, if you will, at your business in terms of what will happen during and after a disaster. So when you're coming back into, you know, business, how you're going to get your business back into full operation. Um, you know, for example, we, at the beginning of hurricane season, we order, we, we put in our entire year's worth of uh, photocopier toner supplies so that we know that we'll have plenty of toner. And then we always order extra, you know, uh, paper. We order extra office supplies. So we do a lot of that kind of stuff so that if we have to do, um, you know, that kind of um, what you'll need to do during, her, if you're going to have people come back in the office, you know, you know, to get the business back on running, you know, odds are pretty good that, you know, you don't want to be doing it on one toner cartridge. You're going to need to have multiple. So that would be the kind of thing that you'd want to have in your business. Disaster. Yeah. And what about, um, radios you know if you've got a campus or if your business you know is a big area do you have radios do you have extra radios in case the employees leave them at home or they get lost or damaged and those kinds of things that's the kind of stuff that you want to work through so that uh, you're not you know you're not paralyzed by those kinds of oversights in your recovery plan yeah, it's it's funny you mentioned toner because I actually worked for HGI Technologies and it was one of our customers that said, "Hey, our toner, we ran out of toner. We don't have a backup." And, and it was a day after the storm, and they were trying to print stuff out uh, for their customers. And uh, so we ran we ran to the uh, ran to the office and and was able to grab them some toner. So that's too fun. All right, Brittany, do we have any questions? We do. Uh, first question is, you had mentioned, uh, this, this is for Bill, you had mentioned an app. Could you uh, re-explain that app one more time just so everyone knows and they can share it? Sure. We have, actually, we have two um, uh, programs. One app is called, it's called PBC DART. Uh, PBC, is Palm Beach County, DART, D Disaster Assessment uh, and reporting tool and there it's on Google and uh, Apple and so and it's free downloadable and that's the the individual but then there's uh, John said that he'll send out the links um, to the, uh, the business app that you can get so we'll send that out as well uh, but there's a you can you can use the the PBC dart app as well uh, that would apply. It's just the business one has different pictures. It's the same thing. The other app that I want to talk about is uh, Alert PBC, and that's our alert and notification app. That is an app that we you can sign up for where we're, we will alert you on your phone of uh, a variety of different hazards and emergencies. So if there was um, severe weather coming, it's, it's, it's not like your weather app from, you know, the news stations per se, but it's, it, it will alert you of, um, you know, um, you know, you know, tornado, uh, tornado alerts. It's a, you know, it's like it replaces your, um, you know, your, the, the, those old uh, weather radio kind of things. Um, and it, and it's, lo it's location friendly. So you could have, I, for example, I, I live in Boynton Beach and I, I work here in West Palm Beach. So I have signed up for both municipalities. So you can sign up for, and if your parents live in, 
in Boca or wherever you could you could sign up for them as well for that one as well kind of thing. So it's very very um, flexible and downloadable. And it's and again that's um, on our website as well. You can do, you can it's called Alert PBC. Yeah, and it's it's great and easy to to download and and set. Yeah, I think you can set multiple cities. I believe I did. I think I set like five or six multiple cities. Um, now, question for you, Bill, on this one. Does that, in, would, would that be, let's say there was a, um, a riot, would it notify us to stay away from a certain area? Um, well, we, we used it this weekend. <laughs> so the answer is yes. Yep. So it's not just for weather. It could be for other emergencies that are out there. And, All 14 and, of our hazards. Yeah. So, you know, hate to bring that up, because, but, you know, unfortunately, it's, it's where we're at today. All right, great. Thank you. Brittany, did we have any other questions? I know we're almost out of time here. Yeah, we'll take, uh, I've got a few more, so let me just look through. Um, do you sub, okay, so do you subcontract your work out, or are you doing the work yourself as the business owner? So that must be probably a question for me, Bill. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so at r and Industries, we do sub some of the work out, but all of the emergency mitigation repairs for roofing and, and things like that, that's all our in-house crews. We have over 100, uh, roughly 100 uh, employees and staff ready to go, um, our own trucks, our own cranes. So yeah, we're, we're fully staffed for that. But there is some of the work that would be uh, subcontracted out mostly for the manpower and, and plus you want third party uh, for insurance purposes to also do some of the work for you when it comes to mitigation and doing a dry out uh, for insurance purposes it's best to, to subcontract that out so hopefully that answered their question wonderful Brittany can I just interrupt for a second the the website to sign up for alert PBC is www.alert pbc all one word dot com alert pbc dot com okay just put that in the chat for everyone to be able to copy and paste thank you very much okay um one more question uh is there a service to document your property now yes so we have uh at r, &R industries we do have a what we call a pre-storm uh, property assessment. And that assessment is we'll come out, document uh, the property uh, for what it is existing, mostly um, exterior um, parts of the property, but with there's lobbies, we'll go inside and, and you know take some photos for you. At this time, there's no charge for that either um, for, for the time being. We usually do charge for it, but right now we're running, since we're starting a brand new division, r is doing it at no cost. Um, but yeah, when, what you want to do is it's pre pretty much a 10 page document that you'll be able to use, uh, to protect yourself, to show what the property looked like before the storm hit, because a lot of times in insurance, you'll hear them say that that was a pre-existing condition, nothing better than proof of what it looked like right before the storm. Wonderful. Okay, so uh, just to confirm a couple of things, John, your email up there is john at rrindustriesdaytona.com. And the next Hurricane Preparedness webinar will be on July 1st. Yes. So everyone mark their calendars for that. I believe we have the topic for that day. Is that correct, John? Yeah, the topic is going to be uh, after, you know, after the storm. Uh, it's basically what it's going to be, what to do after a disaster and after a hurricane. And I'm real excited. I did get confirmation that uh, I'm going to have international uh, speaker, best-selling author Chip Merlin is going to join us. And I'll have all that information going out. He finally confirmed uh, with me uh, yesterday that he is available that date. So we're pretty excited about that. I'll have all that information uh, sent out to everybody soon. So that, that's going to be an exciting one. If, if, I don't know if anyone here knows uh, Chip, but he is, when it comes to uh, what they call first party law, he's one of the best in the industry. Wonderful. Well, thank you, gentlemen, both for your time today and your expertise. I know um, as Floridians, this is just really good information to know and be refreshed on because it does happen every year. Um, and some years we get luckier than others. Um, so fingers crossed this year will be lucky as ever.
Um, so I wanted to Palm Beach. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Wanted to share a couple of upcoming events. Um, definitely mark your calendars for July 1st for the next hurricane webinar. We do have our weekly tech toast happening tomorrow at four o'clock. Uh, it's a the theme is leadership themed on the importance of values in an organization. We will have our new member orientation, which is also available for current members of the chamber, Friday morning at eight o'clock. Next Tuesday, we'll have our successful connections, Chamber 101, which is a brand new event, so get excited for that for our members. And then our webinar next week will be talking about building business and relationships during coronavirus times. Um, so stay tuned for that information. Please take a look at our website, pbnchamber.com. And again, I just wanted to thank you both Bill and John for your time today and your expertise. And everyone, have a great rest of your Wednesday and a great rest of your week. Thank you. Thanks again, Bill. Greatly appreciate it. And Mike, thank you. Thank you. Oh, and of course, you.